Welcome. In the last video, we introduced the concept of data type modifiers by talking about unsigned and signed integers. We'll continue on this topic today, so let's get started. So we said that the data type char, it can go from the numbers negative 128 to the number 127, and this occupies one byte. Okay, then what else do we have? We have the data type int. And the data type int, I'll just use this color. The data type int can go from roughly negative 2 billion, and let me put a little squiggly here, to roughly, again, 2 billion. And this occupies 4 bytes. So we learn how we can extend this a little bit farther by taking away the negative part and simply going and using the positive part. Now let's talk about what happens if you want an integer data type that is somewhere in between these two, meaning you can represent with less than four bytes and you don't want to use four bytes like an integer, or if a number you want to use is very big, like four billion, and you cannot represent with an integer. So this data type modifier affects only integers. So let's talk about it. There is a way for me to say, hey, integer, I don't want you to be four bytes long. Instead, I want you to be two bytes long. And to say that, we call it short. So a short is a short integer, a small integer. And what the short does, it occupies two bytes. Then I have an int, which, you know, we don't have to do anything. We already know what an int does, which is four bytes. And then I could also say, you know what, I want to make a long int, which means that I want to even make it longer, which is double it. And this can be up to eight bytes. And as you can imagine, I can do this one more time and say long, long int. So if we look at the way we did the math last time, roughly two bytes can give us up to negative 65K to roughly 65K, right? plus or minus, and then if we have an integer, we said it was plus or minus, what, roughly 2 billion, and for a long integer, well, this is quite big. I'm just going to say big. With that being said, you have the option to make an integer smaller by just simply using the keyword short, or you can make an integer way longer by saying, I'm, an, I'm going to be a long integer. Now, one thing that I have to mention, and that you kind of have to be aware of, is that the keywords short and long can be different from compiler to compiler. In some compilers, long and int, they're exactly the same thing. So you could just use long instead of int and not have to write long int. And if you wanted a long integer, then you would have to say long, long integer. And the reason I say that is because that is how Visual Studio works. So let's go check out how it looks in code. So here we have uh, an integer, right? So let me get rid of char. Let's just use an integer for the sake of, of this example. So let me remove the two so it looks cleaner, right? And let's just go, let's be positive today. I'm just going to put the number 10. So here we're using an integer which occupies four bytes and we show the result is 10. But what if I don't want to occupy four bytes? I don't need four bytes to represent 10. I, I mean, I could use a char, right? Oh, let's just, let's just go to 1,000, all right? I, I want to represent the number 1,000. I don't need four bytes. Well, I could say, hey, turn this into a short integer. So now when I run this, now I get 1,000. There is, seems to be no difference, right? If I remove this and I run this, what happens? There's still, what, 1,000. So there seems to be no difference. Well, to us, visually, there isn't. Inside of the computer, we save two bytes, right? So if that's something we care about, we save two bytes. It's implied that when you use the keyword short, we're talking about an integer. So I don't need to even type integer. I could just say short, and automatically it knows that we're talking about an integer, as you can see right here. Result is a 1,000, all right? No big deal. Now, what happens when we want to represent a long integer or a very big integer? So let me write int, and I said that the biggest number we can represent with int is roughly 2 billion. So let's just show 2 billion. So that's 2,000, 2 million, 2 billion. So I should be able to show 2 billion in here. Result, 2 billion. 
Now, let's say that I write 3 billion, right? It should give us a similar error to the one we got on the previous video with char going over, right? It, it became negative. Again, we'll talk about why, how did it get this number in the next video. So we're not able to represent 3 billion with it. So if I type long int, ideally this should make an integer longer. But again, the way that long works varies from compiler to compiler. And in Visual Studio, long and long int, they work the exact same way. So I could type long and I would still not be able to do it. So how I have to do to represent 3 billion is I have to say long, long, and then I say int, and now I can represent 3 billion. However, there is an issue. I cannot demonstrate to you that what I have written here is indeed correct because the value that we put here has to be a decimal and it just so happens that this thing that I have not explained how it works, it wants an integer, not a long, long integer. So when I tried to write this result here, what this is going to do is it's going to convert it to an integer and we're not going to be able to represent 3 billion. So if I run this, yes, I have indeed created an 8 byte long integer, but I cannot demonstrate that to you by using this because Again, this is an integer, and this is a long, long integer. So what happens is this will get converted when it gets given to this piece of code, which I have not explained how it works. And so I cannot show you. But in order to sim simulate that it is indeed correct, I'm going to write the 3 billion, right? So now result has 3 billion. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say result, and I'm going to subtract this 3 billion, which is result, minus 1 billion. So that's 1,000, 1 million, 1 billion. So I should get 2 billion here, right? So let's see it. There it is, 2 billion. Again, it might look like I'm cheating, but think about it. I have stored 3 billion in it. If I couldn't do it, then this result wouldn't have 3 billion. It would have an error like we did earlier, right? And an error minus a billion is another error. So the way that I claim that we indeed have an 8 byte long in which we store 3 billion is by saying that this 3 billion, I am able to do math with it. I'm able to subtract 1 billion from it. And indeed I have 2 billion, which 2 billion can go here because it's an integer. Okay? So I'm just trying to show you that what I'm telling you is real, it's the truth, and I'm not lying to you. Alright? I know you know that I'm not lying to you, but I like to show what we're doing actually works. Okay? So these data type modifiers that we talked about affect integers. What about floating numbers? So a float, we said that roughly has what? Seven digits of precision, meaning it can represent from the point to the right up to seven digits without actually losing some kind of precision, without actually affecting the accuracy of the number. What if I wanted to go beyond that? Well, there isn't really a data type modifier for float, but instead there is a whole new data type for it. And the name of this data type is called a double. And it's called a double because we get twice as many digits of precision. So this will give us roughly between 14 to 15 digits of precision. It is very dependent upon the number because again, the way that floating numbers are represented in the computer, they follow a quite interesting scheme. And so you get roughly between 14 to 15 digits of precision using a double. So if you know that your number for your fractional part is going to be quite big, then you should opt out for using a double. A lot of people just use double. Now, of course, double precision means that it also occupies twice as much. So this is four bytes and a double will be what? Eight bytes. Additionally, you could also say long double. But similarly to what I said with integers, in some compilers, the word long doesn't really do anything or it doesn't really change the size of the following data type. In Visual Studio, it just so happens that long double is the same thing as double. So we do not need to really talk about using long double with double. However, if you were in a compiler that treats this data type slightly different, then a long double would be the way to get 8 bytes. Let's go look at a quick example in code. So now let's use a float. So I go float result is 10.5. I change this to an F. 
and I and I oh what am I doing? And I run this, and I should get what 10.5. Okay. So now if I wanted to change this to a double, everything works exactly the same way, except that now my floating number occupies eight bytes in memory. Again, we could try to show this, but because we have to deal with the way this works, uh, it's a little bit more tedious to do with result, and then this video would get longer, but it's the same concept that we had with long, long int. This thing, this code right here, does stuff to things, to these numbers that we give. And so it, when I give this double result, if I try to show you that I can actually get 15 digits of precision. We have to modify some of these things and you need to understand how this works. So for now on this one, I want you to believe me that we have indeed preserved the ability to store a floating number, but now we have twice as much precision or twice as many, twice as many bytes to represent this number. Okay. So use double and if we were to use long double, Again, this is something that, that you would have to trust me. Long double and double in Visual Studio, they're the same. In other compilers, long double might actually make double even longer. Okay, they decided that it's not needed here. Perhaps there's a way to modify it in Visual Studio settings, but it's something that perhaps we can do in a very, very future video. Okay, so I have this little last table. Feel free to take a screenshot. You can Google this. You don't have to uh, memorize any of this. And we say that a character roughly has a range of negative 128 to 127. A short is about 32,000. I think I say 35 earlier, but it's 32,000 uh, plus or minus. And then an integer is roughly 2 billion, from negative 2 billion to 2 billion. And then a long int is... Again, it could either be four or eight bytes, and this depends on the compiler. In Visual Studio, it is four bytes, and that means that long and long int, they're exactly the same. That's not supposed to be a, a frowny face, but you know it could also work that way. And then if you wanted to make this even bigger, then you could say long, long int, and that would give you this very large number that you can enter in a calculator, and you know you can see how big it is. You shouldn't really need anything bigger than that. If you do, you probably need some specialized software for that, and you're probably not watching these kinds of videos if you do. Maybe. Maybe you are. Maybe you're not. Okay? And if you use sign and unsign, which I did not include in this table, then you're basically eliminating all the negatives in this table. You're basically doubling the range of the positive numbers. So, for example, in here... If you were to use an unsigned short, you would get up to 64,000 uh, in positive, but you would lose the negative part, of course. And, of course, if you go to int, a unsigned int will go up to 4 billion and so forth. All right, there are data type modifiers that help us modify slightly the data type so that it can meet our needs for our application. You don't necessarily need to memorize these numbers. You, you sort of need to know roughly where their limit is in case you come across these issues in the future and it's a good idea to have them in mind in case you ever need to do something clever or you see someone else's code and you say why are they using an integer in a char data type the way they're using it it's because we have the power to control how the data is stored inside of memory all right if you have any questions don't hesitate to ask leave a comment below if you found this video useful and you don't mind, leave a like. If you're new to this channel, check out the video series. Check out the channel. If you like what you see, subscribe, be safe, and peace out.